like a dog leg here that's supposed to have this mounting nut, but it is so far gone, I'm gonna have to rebuild this whole thing here. I did a patch panel on the other fender, but I didn't really have to rework the, the mounting bracket, so this should be interesting. You can see where it's just been filling up with dirt. The rust is going all the way up through here, so we have to cut all of this out, replace it. Uh -oh. I hit it too hard. Trying to get an idea where the rust starts on this. So I'm going to go a little bit wider than the rust here just to be safe. So I have that cut out pretty close the next step. This is actually the, the door skin is folded over the frame. So I'm gonna just, I think the easiest way to take it off is just to grind through this. I think what I'm going to do, this was supposed to just be a patch panel repair, but it, there's, I have no choice but to replace uh, this mount. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is start with this little piece right here and try and copy that. If I get that, then I can build up the sides and uh, hopefully get the top figured out. So I'm just going to try and cut this off and keep, keep the shape so I can use it to, to make the same thing here. Like the next thing I'll do, I'm just kind of doing this in different dimensions. So first I'm going to build the base layer. I need something to connect this to, so I'm going to cut this piece out. I'll get the kind of the floor of this. Then I'm going to come up with the walls and then uh, hopefully do the tops. So since this piece was completely gone, the only thing I have left, I have to figure out how tall to make it. So hopefully I can get this thing kind of wedged in back where it was. Oh, that's got to be close. That will allow me to take a wild guess on how tall I need to make this thing. So the camera was dying last night, the battery was dying, and it was getting dark. Uh, the only thing that you missed off camera was I decided to cut out this section because it was pretty bad as well. And I fabbed up this piece here to sit in here. So now I'm going to weld that in and mock it up on the, uh, the truck, 
trace it out so that I know where the bolt goes, then I can weld the nut on the other side and be done with that. And a quick mock up here. I had to buy different uh, bolts because the ones on there are completely seized. It actually snapped in half when I tried to take it out. So, make sure that doesn't stick out past the sheet metal, which it won't. So that ought to do the trick. All right, now onto the patch panel, which was all I thought I was gonna have to do from the start. Yes, it was midnight on the sea. The family's here on down to me. Very Titanic, very well. Finally, ready for the patch panel. So this is the piece that I cut out. Now all I have to do is make the same exact piece here. Start tacking it in. I have to make it a little bit wide so that I can roll the lips over the end here and down here. Try and get every area that you tack weld completely flush. All right, so I have this all tacked in flush. I'm not going to put the rest of it on camera, but I'm just going to go through just to keep the heat down and kind of hop around trying to get this. Uh, welded completely all the way around all the seams. So that kind of grinded it down kind of allows you to see the in-between so now I'm just going to go back and start filling those in. Alright so that's about as far as I'm going to go. For some reason this looks way worse in the camera. Uh, this, there's no holes or seams, you can't see through it. This is just where the, the welds are built up a little bit higher than the parent, the parent metal here. I can run my fingernails over it. It's tempting to grind it down further, but if I do that, I'm going to thin out this and I don't want to. But I mean, literally just a, the tiniest skim coat of body filler will clean that up and won't be a problem. So I got the fender all down to bare metal. Um, you can see where somebody who knew less than I did, not that I know a lot, but uh, they tried to, there must have been some damage here and they tried to just pound it out from the inside. You can even see some of the hammer marks. Um, so I just bought this kit a while ago. I think it's from Gear Wrench. It has three body hammers and four dollies. This is what I used on the other fenders, but this is the incorrect way to pound out a dent is just to go from the inside and try and knock it out like they did. The correct way, there's actually two methods. Um, off dolly hammering, which is essentially you're going to put the low spot of the dent right here. Then you're going to pound around the outside edges, which are actually the high spots, and uh, try and equalize it. Then there's on dolly hammering, which is you really, you can stretch the metal, so you kind of want to avoid that, but that's where uh, you're actually hitting, you're smashing the metal in between the hammer and the uh, dolly. That can stretch it out. You really want to be gentle if you're doing that, and that's for fine touches. So I'm just going to try and get all of this smooth enough that I can cover up with body filler. So I find a low spot up here. 
to get around the edges. I've got this about as good as I'm going to get it. Uh, some of these spaces are kind of hard to get into and I don't necessarily feel like trying to stud weld and pull them out. They're pretty small so it shouldn't be an issue. Doing the cowl as well and I, just like I did on the other side, I cut out the antenna hole and did a little patch panel in there. So next thing to do, I'm going to blast it off with some uh, metal prep and uh, shoot it with some epoxy primer do the uh, filler work, another coat of epoxy primer, and uh, put it back on the vehicle until I figure out what I want to do for paint. I'm kind of working through the whole vehicle one panel at a time. All right, so I'm gonna be sealing this with the po black epoxy primer. Little trick I saw somebody do is to put some tape on the end of this thing so that without this, it just gets everywhere. Uh, the ratio is four to one to one. So that's uh, four parts epoxy primer, one part activator, and one part reducer. Gonna mix that up, pour it in my gun. I've been advised to use a cheap spray gun. I have a nice HVLP, but uh, this epoxy primer, if you don't get it out in time, it will ruin your gun. So I'm just using a uh, 1.8 millimeter gun I got from Harbor Freight. I did that on the other fender, and it worked pretty well. All right, so it's been a few days. I think you have a five day recoat window before you're supposed to scuff epoxy primer. Um, I went ahead and sanded some of this. It's been like three days. I just went ahead and sanded some of this, but you can see where there's some uh, anomalies. And uh, right here, I'm gonna scuff sand this. Well, I already did, and I'm just gonna put the body filler over this right now. There's this hardener, you wanna mush it around a bit because otherwise it'll come out like a liquid. I've heard just run a ribbon from the center to the outside. Let's start with the lumpiest area here. From what I understand, you're much better off doing multiple thin layers than one thick one. And I've found that you don't want to work this stuff too much. You don't want to go over it too much if you can help it. One of the ways I've found that uh, kind of can tell you if the filler's ready to sand is if you have gloves on. If they stick to it, you should wait longer. I used 80 grit for the last time, the last fender, but it left some marks that were kind of hard to fill with the epoxy primer, so I'm going to use 120 to knock this down. Alright, so I put two more skip cuts of body filler on here, have it all sanded down how I want it. Now I'm just going to wipe everything down with some denatured alcohol. I'm sure uh, most people use something else, I'm not sure what, so if you have any suggestions, let me know. Skinny, 